Hi, this is a demo for the event triggers feature in CDAP. Let's go through the use case for event triggers in brief. Typically, data engineering groups in large enterprises are decentralized. Teams develop specialized skill sets in particular areas of data processing and have specific charters. For example, a team may be responsible for data acquisition. Another may be responsible for cleansing, transforming, normalizing, uh, or analyzing data in some sort of way. Another team of data scientists may be responsible for consuming this data and applying machine learning models to derive insights from data. These teams all have dependencies on each other, and this results in creation of complex data processing dependencies in such large enterprises. Typically, these dependencies are events that are generated by a given process uh, that are that an, another process may want to depend on. Some examples of such events would be um, arrival of new data, successful completion of a process, the failure of a process, uh, a time-based event such as you know, 3 o'clock on Tuesday, uh, the creation of a file at a given location, uh, and so on. A process may have a dependency on a single such event or even a complex combination of multiple such events. Also, typically in a production environment, processes do not run one-off. They run periodically, uh, be it uh, hourly, weekly, daily, etc. Uh, they can typically be scheduled to run on a time basis. However, it is often impossible to determine the time to run a process because of the dependencies that we mentioned earlier. Moreover, a delay in running an upstream process would mean that a downstream process scheduled to run at a particular time now does not have uh, its input ready when it got triggered. Such dependencies which are very common can lead to wastage of resources and um, in general unpredictability in your data processing systems. In such scenarios, it would be much better for processes to be scheduled based on uh, when specific events are fired, events uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, these triggers for processes are commonly known as event triggers in CDAP. So in such a system of complex interdependent processes, uh, typically an upstream process generates an event that also contains some handshaking information. A downstream process uh, that subscribes to this event gets triggered when the event is fired and uses the available handshaking information in the event at runtime. These processes end up creating a complex dependency graph and from an operational standpoint it is extremely useful and important to visualize these dependencies so as to effectively trace and resolve any problems or issues uh, that may occur. Let's go into a quick demo of how event-based triggers work in CDAP. So consider the following scenario. At a large enterprise, a data acquisition team uh, is responsible for acquiring data from various sources and making it available for other processes in a common format. This is a typical use case in any large enterprise that is setting out to build a data lake, for example. So for this purpose, uh, the data acquisition team, uh, as you can see, has created a data acquisition pipeline in CDAP. For the sake of simplicity, this pipeline reads from a CDAP stream uh, called a user data stream in this pipeline, uh, runs some parsing and normalization logic that it has developed, and then generates normalized data as, as output. So it is basically responsible for cleaning the data uh, making sure uh, the format of data is correct, uh, making sure it's standard so that others can consume it. Let's take a look at another pipeline. So another team of data quality analysts in the same org is responsible for ensuring the quality of all data in this enterprise. For the user data uh, that was acquired and normalized by the acquisition team, it has created a data quality pipeline called the DQ pipeline. This pipeline runs some predefined validation rules uh, on, on the data. And based on whether those validations succeed or fail, it 
uh, stores the output in either an errors data set or in a valid records data set. Now during development, uh, the data validation team has developed this pipeline based on sample uh, data that was acquired from the acquisition team. Uh, the acquisition team told uh, the, the, the quality team about the format of the output and uh, based on some sample data, this pipeline was tested. Like you can see, I can choose to just run this pipeline if I wanted to without specifying any dependency on the acquisition uh, pipeline. So I can use this during testing when I'm running this one off uh, or when I, when I don't really want to consume any other data. This ensures loose coupling between the two pipelines. You know, development can happen faster without uh, too many uh, interdependencies. Let's take a look at event triggers now. Uh, there's a inbound triggers pane uh, for the DQ pipeline, which allows you to set dependencies for the DQ pipeline. As you can see here, you can choose a, a pipeline that the DQ pipeline would depend on and consume data from. Uh, let's choose the data acquisition and normalization pipeline that we uh, that we just saw. However, uh, we could just enable the trigger right here, but at runtime, the DQ pipeline must know where the data was produced uh, and any other information about the data that would be useful uh, for the DQ pipeline's logic. Uh, in CDAP, this is implemented by way of the event payload and you can configure it using the configure payload link. So for this demo, we're going to set the runtime argument of the DQ pipeline, which is normalized input data which is where uh, the DQ pipeline reads input from. And we're going to tell the DQ pipeline to choose the value of normalized input data based on the value of the normalized output runtime argument of the upstream data acquisition pipeline. So as you can see here, I have specified some hand-checking information between an upstream and a downstream pipeline based upon the runtime arguments of those pipelines. So let's configure and enable this trigger, which would mean that this dependency has been fully satisfied. So as you can see now, in the same inbound triggers pane uh, for the DQ pipeline, uh, one trigger has been enabled uh, and it, it has been set as the data acquisition and normalization pipeline. Now let's consider another team in the same organization, which is responsible for generating aggregations on this user data that was generated by the same data acquisition team. Let's say it has developed a simple pipeline for doing this called the data aggregation pipeline. And like the data quality team, it has also developed this with minimal dependency on the data acquisition pipeline. And, and you can also choose to run it without specifying any dependencies. Let's configure the trigger for this pipeline similarly to the DQ pipeline. So I can choose the data acquisition and normalization pipeline again, uh, configure its payload, choose the runtime argument normalized input to be uh, derived from the normalized output runtime argument of the data acquisition uh, and normalization pipeline. In both these cases, I have uh, shown how to develop handshaking, specify handshaking between the two pipelines by way of runtime arguments. A similar thing can be done by uh, using the configuration of any plugin in the upstream pipeline. For example, I could very well choose to get the value of one of the runtime arguments of the downstream pipeline based on the value of uh, a field in one of the nodes of the upstream pipeline. So for this demo, let's configure and enable uh, the trigger using runtime arguments. Uh, by clicking the configure and enable uh, button. And like you can see now for the data aggregation pipeline as well, uh, the data acquisition and normalization pipeline has been set as an inbound trigger. If you go to the data acquisition and normalization pipeline now, it has uh, an, a, a pane to show outbound triggers from this pipeline. Uh, if you click on it, you should see both the aggregation and the DQ pipelines have been set as triggers for this pipeline.
What these two panes uh, of inbound and outbound triggers also help you do at runtime is navigate between upstream and downstream processes, which is extremely uh, critical during operation of a production process because uh, this will help you when there are uh, problems and issues in production. You can trace problems by navigating through this dependency graph. You can also, when a problem occurs, trace the impact of this, gauge the impact of the problem by looking at the other end of the spectrum uh, in, in the downstream pipelines of a given pipeline. So now if you look at the data acquisition and normalization pipeline, uh, typically this would also be scheduled based on uh, either some other dependency or, or based on a time event. However, for the sake of this demo, I shall just run this pipeline uh, manually for now. I'm going to specify that uh, the output data set for, for this normalization pipeline would be um, output user data and the raw data stream to be the input uh, user data. I'm going to save this and run this upstream pipeline. As you can see, the pipeline uh, has been submitted now. Uh, it should slowly transition into running state and consume all the events from the stream and hopefully finish really soon. So like you can see, uh, my upstream pipeline just finished uh, and if I refresh all three pipelines, uh, I should actually see that the, the DQ pipeline has started running already. And so is the case with the aggregation pipeline as well. As soon as these pipelines finish, we should see uh, that they've succeeded and consumed uh, the data that the upstream pipeline had generated. So like you can see, uh, the upstream pipeline had generated some 24 records uh, that got consumed in the downstream pipelines, uh, which did their job and then uh, produced uh, their results. So just to conclude and give a quick summary, uh, today you saw a demo of event triggers in CDAP. Event triggers help you specify and manage dependencies between your data processes effectively. They can be used in any scenario where complex dependencies exist between processes in your data processing systems. Thank you for listening in and stay tuned to the CASC blog and the CASC YouTube channel for more such videos.